Good morning, friends. Welcome to another Field Trip Friday. My name's Steve. And I'm Tanika. Good morning. So today we're really excited because we're going to take a look back at all of the Field Trip Fridays that we have been on since September. So we're going to look at all the places that we have visited and have a chance to reflect on some of the things that we have learned. We are really excited to have a few people with us. First of all, we have David. So hi, David. So glad you could finally be with us. He's the one that does all the camera work for all of these fun um, field trips that we've been on. And every Friday, we've also hosted a different DPS classroom. So we're really excited because we have multiple classrooms here th today. And all of you have already shared with us previously before. So we have, we have Parkwood Elementary with Ms. Boo and Ms. Adams and Ms. Burns. We have Spring Valley with Ms. Holloway and Ms. Williams. We have Pearson Town with Ms. Virgil. We have Southwest with Ms. Gazy. We have Moorhead Elementary with Ms. Harden and Y.E. Smith with Ms. Weaver. Good morning to all of you. We're so excited that you're here. Thank you friends for joining us. And so um, because this is a special season finale, we're kind of considering, right? This is the end of our regular season. Um, I wanted to share something really special that we've, we've built to help you kind of explore Field Trip Fridays and a little bit of kind of understanding of what we're doing today. So today we're gonna look back on all the field trips that we've gone uh, on across this last school year. Um, I know that there's some year round um, schools with us, so pardon my language of school year, it's different for you. But either way, um, since September, we've gone to all these different places and I wanna show you a map that we've built on our website. So here's our, here's our website. And when you hover over this learn um, tab, you can find real science field trip Fridays right here. When I click on that, it takes me to this cool webpage with a picture of Carly, Jenna, myself, and David. Um, I wanted Jenna to, to join us, but they are actually facilitating another program um, at their new job right now. And so they, they said good luck and, and, and best wishes to all of you. Um, but if you scroll below below our um, kind of like information up here, you'll find like one of the videos. This is one that we just decided to feature this catching up with red wolves. But then down here, there's this really cool map that you can explore of all the different places that we've been. And so like, for example, this is the, the Luthiers shop, the, the Luthiers workshop where we went and learned about guitars. And I can click over here and see them all listed. And when I click on one, so for example, if I go to visiting the Luthiers workshop, I can see the description of the video. I can see the, the kind of think about this prompts that we would send out with the flyers each week. You can find links to the video. So these are the live ones where we have the live Q&A. And then this is just the HD, uh, just the, the kind of pre-recorded film that we, we watch during these. Um, and you can, you can visit them. And we'll be adding more content to this as we go along. As we add more field trips, you'll find them here. Um, we'll be adding photographs and things like that. So you can explore the project on our website and through this map. And and so now we're going to watch a video that explores pieces of all of these trips that we've taken, all 30 trips that we took. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you now. And while we watch it, I'd like you to stay curious and excited. And so if you have things you want to you wanna share, uh, experiences that you remember having been on these trips, if you were, or just ideas and questions about what you're seeing, please put them in the chat and we'll have a chance to talk about them afterwards. If you have questions about how we made these videos, think about those kinds of ideas and we'll share as much awesome question and answer time as we possibly can. So without further ado, um, let's get watching this video. And I'm Steve. And welcome to another Field Trip Friday. Where are we today, Steve? We're here at the museum. We get all of our butterflies for uh, Magic Wings Butterfly House from butterfly farms around the tropical world to include several in Central and South America, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Kenya and East Africa. Oh. 
I am the veterinarian for the farm animals out here in the farmyard. And this is an everyday thing for you in Virginia? It is. This happens every morning. We're here at Prodigal Farm. Woo, I am so excited. Pasteurization is a heat treatment, and so there's a variety of different temperatures that you can pasteurize at, but you want to be as gentle on the milk as you can for cheese milking. Um, a little creek called Rocky Ranch Creek, which flows into the Eno, and that is, directly flows into Falls Lake, which is where the city of Raleigh and most of Wake County gets its drinking water. So my name is Janelle Henry. I am the, the Director of Operations and Strategic Partnerships. So my name is Moses Ochoa, and I'm a co-founder of the Black Farmers Market. Yeah, so the Black Farmers Market is a marketplace we host it twice a month, um, once in Durham and once in Raleigh. We have over 35 vendors this year, a combination of farmers and business owners. Hi, my name is Phoebe Gooding, and um, welcome to Hawk's Nest Healing Gardens. We're here at Loaf. Well, today we're going to do an experiment with a, a slightly different kind of cookie dough that I made today. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So what is Loco Pops? Loco Pops started 15 years ago as a really simple popsicle store. We still make popsicles, they're called palotas in Spanish. But we also offer ice cream and puzzles and games and lots of fun stuff. We're here at the Luthiers Workshop here in Hillsboro, North Carolina.
Yeah, so you see, every time Jenna grabs on a hold, they do a great job of pulling. We're here at Duke Gardens. Woohoo! So how does a Venus flytrap work, Kavana? Yeah, so Venus flytraps have these small modified leaves that can sense when something touches it. And if something touches the trigger hair two or three times, that signals those leaves to snap shut. So we're fulfilling a lifelong dream of mine. <laughs> Playing being, third base? Yes. <laughs> being here on the Bulls field, this is incredible. Yeah. My name is Emily Almond. Um, I'm the marketing and fan engagement coordinator. And right now we are in game operations room. Hey Josh. Hello. Thank you so much for having us here. It is so cool to be backstage at the Durham Performing Arts Center. Can you tell us who you are and what you do here? All right, well, my name's Josh. I'm the technical director at DPEC. Um, it's great to have everyone here today. So the eyes, the head, so he's wrapped around the back of the yoke and this is his tail coming up right here. And then this is the heart, so the atrium and the ventricle, fish have, these fish have two chambered hearts instead of four like we have. What we can do is look at it under an optical microscope. And so essentially what we'll be able to do is watch what's happening to the material when the ions are going in and out.
Tell us a little bit about who you are and what the work of Dive Flight does. Sure, yeah, I'm Dr. Chris Hazard. Um, I work with artificial intelligence and machine learning. Taking a look at this, this uh, Mario Brothers video, you can see that this is an artificial intelligence algorithm that is planning a path for Mario to jump and avoid obstacles. My name is Paul. I've been doing this with the city of Durham for almost 16 years. Nice. Um, I've worked at both water plants, the Williams plant, and this one. I've been here at, over here for the last seven years. Hey, Antonia. Hey, Dave. Thanks Hi. for joining us today. Today, we are going to take you up and down the Enon River and show you some really cool stuff about this wonderful place. The Museum of Life and Science and the Eno River Association acknowledges that this land was previously held by the Yesa people of the Okanichi, Saponi, Tutalu, Shikori, and the Eno tribe. Where are we going today, Tanika? Today we are at the Piedmont Wildlife Center right here in the heart of Durham. I'm Taquan Edmonds. I'm the Education and Outreach Manager with the Triangle Land Conservancy. Um, and we're at one of our eight public nature preserves, which is Horton Grove Nature Preserve. Where we are right now, in particular, is on the grounds of Horton Grove. This is the site for which the nature preserve next door is named. And Horton Grove is the only surviving set of slave dwellings from these massive plantations. So today we're gonna to actually be looking for indicator species, which indicator species are organisms, so plants, animals, insects, fungus, anything that's living, um, that will show us how healthy a system is. That was such a wild ride. Oh man, it was so cool to look back. Um, we called it reflecting because reflection is kind of when you when you take a take a look at what what you are now, what you've become because of what you've experienced. And we experienced so much. You guys blew up the chat. It was so awesome to hear all your interesting thoughts, ideas, and questions. Um, some of your experiences related to the places we've gone, and some of your feelings that you had, and inspiration you've taken from this project. I'd like to let your teachers share out some of those uh, questions and ideas. So yeah, what, what do we got? I'll start. Um, I want to say my class has thoroughly enjoyed tuning in each week to see where we'd be going next. 
They've enjoyed all the hosts, Steve, Tanika, and Jenna. So thank you guys for doing this. And my class was really interested in seeing for you as the host, what was your favorite field trip that you went on this year? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll, uh, Tanika, what was, it, what was your, uh, your favorite, favorite trip? Um, so I didn't, obviously I didn't get to go on as many as Steve, but I always think about trips like that made me, um, that I reference a lot. And so all the time I reference when we went to Duke Gardens, because now I look at pine trees and I'm like, oh, my God, that's where pollen comes from. And that's why my car is yellow when it's supposed to be white. And then I also always think about the water treatment because I use water every day. So I always think in terms of which episodes did I or do I refer to on a daily basis? And it's definitely those two. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I, I agree. Those were super fun episodes because they were they, we learned so much and connected with so, such important topics on those and, and just really beautiful things. And yeah, that's it's always hard. I always try to imagine what my favorite episode is. It's a super hard question because we saw so many cool things. But as a I, I as you saw in that episode, I play guitar and I really love it. And so for me, I think I really, really enjoyed visiting the Luthiers workshop. That was just kind of a dream come true to meet the people that make those instruments and and just work so hard to make something beautiful for someone else, right? Like that, those, those, those craftsmen, they really cared about making something amazing for somebody to make their own art with. And, uh, and I just really appreciated that feeling and, the, and the, the, the smell of the wood and everything was just really awesome. So I think that episode stands out for me sometimes, but some of the others are so amazing. The labs, the uh, deep hack, the bulls, like these were huge dreams. Like Jenna said, like, this is a dream come true. It really was. They had always wanted to stand on that field and they got to. Um, uh, it, was, it was so fun. Yeah, all of these were, were it's hard to pick a favorite. What else, uh, what other uh, questions uh, do we have in our, in our, our uh, classrooms? Um, I just want to say thank you. Oh, sorry. Please, uh, Miss, Miss, uh, we'll go with uh, Miss Virgil and then we'll go to Miss Holloway. I just want to start by saying thank you so much for even doing this. Um, my students have learned so much. Um, how did you all pick the places that you were going to go? I think that's one of the important questions. Yeah, absolutely. That is a really cool question. And so, so it kind of varied. So, sometimes we would just ask people, we'd be like, this would be really cool. Like, so for example, we were just like, maybe we could go to the Durham Bowls or, and, and so we would try to, we asked all of our friends and colleagues, like what connections do you have to the scientists and STEM practitioners in our community? And so we compiled a whole list of all these really cool people and, and, and that we knew that had connections to, to, and what was wild is that was not very hard because our community is so interconnected with STEM practitioners. We knew so many people, and I mean, of course we work at a science museum, so it's maybe not that surprising, but what I, what I think is true about living in, in Durham is that this is a, science, is a city built on, on science. It has a long history of, of, of laboratories, of industry, of um, commercial um, entrepreneurship that leverage the tools of our community. And our community is composed of scientists and technologists and engineers and university um, professors and, and, and researchers. And so because of that, it was, it was relatively easy for us to develop a list of folks to connect with. So uh, uh, Willow and Linda have, have connections in, in the community as, as STEM coordinators for Durham Public Schools. Um, we had connections in the community because of our work as a science museum. And so we just reached out to our friends and said, hey, we're doing this cool thing to, to inspire young learners and curious um, students in our Durham Public Schools would you be willing to do it? And almost every single time they were like, that sounds incredible, let's do it. And so that's how we do that. And then, sorry, Miss Holloway, I think you had a, yes. you had a question. Yes, um, again, um, my class really enjoyed it. I think the entire school at Spring Valley, everybody who participated in it really enjoyed it as well. But a student asked, um, I think this question is geared toward David, how can you edit so easily? Great question. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great question. I, I saw that one in the chat and sometimes it, it depends. Um, some videos, when we film them, they're very easy. We kind of film them in order and they're super easy to kind of put together. Um, there are some videos when we film out of order, we film for, you know, five, potentially five hours a day sometimes. And we have, you know, a ton of video footage. So it might take us take, take, take me or take me and Steve a couple days to kind of plan out the video and then start editing. Um, I will say I've 
been as fast as almost, you know, a day to make an entire FTF video, or like this video took me about two days to plan and about three days to edit. So um, it was definitely a longer time and it depends by video, where we go, by location. It, it, there's a lot of factors that go into kind of making sure that the edits are done by our premiere days. Another thing I would add is just that David is very talented at what he does. He had a passion for, for audio video um, work um, way before he went into when he started going to college. And he was able to kind of pick that skill back up um, during the pandemic. And so it was, it, part of it is, is David's very good at his, his work. And so um, he's, he's, he works really hard to, to, to do it well. And I think that's like, that's so true of so many people who we watch do amazing things. You're like, how do you do that so easily? Well, they worked really hard. That's how they, they make it look easy. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is easy. It just means that they've worked really hard and they've practiced. Um, and that's what David got in this project was a lot of practice in editing. Great question. Um, what other questions do we have? I'll, I'll go yeah, ahead. Please. Yeah. Um, and yeah, thank you. Our, our class has enjoyed so many of these. Uh, I remember the water treatment one, we were studying that in our classroom. And so it was lovely just how it lined up that exact week I had asked Willow if, um, if there was a trip that if we could take an extra trip and she was like, there's one this week. And so it was just so cool that that lined up. But one of my students wants to know, how did you start or think of Field Trip Fridays? That's an awesome question because we didn't actually, like our community developed this, this idea. So um, uh, your teachers, uh, a, a collection of, of teachers that we connect with, um, they thought of this idea and they thought it would be really cool for us to try to try to bring field trips to students because field trips were no longer really an option during especially the beginning of this pandemic period. We were no longer able to take trips as a community and visit one another as, 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 as we would want to. Um, but we really didn't want the learning um, and connection to the science around us to stop. And so we needed to think of a way to, to bring those experiences to learners in their, in their homes, wherever that might be. Um, so teachers thought of this idea and we, we have a, a kind of a, a group um, um, of, of teachers and community um, partners that come together to, to talk about ideas for how um, we can connect as, as a community and um, inspire and empower our learners. And so, yeah, that's where that idea came from. It came from a, a coordinated effort between the school system and the community of, of science practitioners in our, in our city. Great question. I have a question. Uh, so first off, thank you guys, because I think the curiosity level that these field trips brought was incredible. We have a level of questioning I've never seen with students this uh, before and this grade level because of all of these wonderful opportunities. Um, but one of the questions we were wondering about is when you came in contact with the animals, your first experience, were you guys scared when you had these new experiences? I think that's such a great question. I'm going to let Tanika answer this one first and then I'll, I'll, I'll answer too. I'm going to tell you. Um, so we were recording um, earlier this week and they kept talking about snakes. They're like rat snakes and seven feet and big as your fist. And, uh, uh, uh. and I was like, all right, listen, I'll handle any kind of animal. I'll, I'll hold a tarantula. I'll do whatever. But if I see a snake, I'm running. This is the snake's land. I'm not handling it. I'm not doing it, period, right? So <laughs> to answer your question, I, personally, I'm not scared of any animal except for a snake. You know, and Steve is like, oh, I'll let the snake wrap around my arm and squeeze. I can feel the strain. I'm like, nah, now the snake can have my arm. I'll chop it off and they can live happily ever after. So. <laughs> Thank you, Tanika. Yeah, it was, it's, it's been super fun. Tanika, as you know, is a very fun person and she's so fun to work with and we've had so much fun. Um, I, as for me, I, I have handled, I've been an animal handler at the museum for a long time. Um, and so I don't think I typically get scared um, in the way that you might imagine. What I get sometimes is I start feeling a little bit of anxiousness to make sure that like, so for example, when we um, were doing that catching up of the wolves, 
um, I wanted to make sure that that was done as stress-free as possible. So, so you know, we want, we, we get like kind of, I would say like a little nervous to make sure we're doing our jobs the best we can to be, to keep those animals as healthy and safe as we possibly can. So it's really more like a concern for the, for those animals more than it is like a fear of them. It's like, I'm the big scary animal typically in the space. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm keeping the, 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 the non-human animals that we're working with safe and, and healthy. Um, so that's usually what I feel is like a little bit of anxiety for like, I need to make sure that I'm doing this right. Um, so I think it is so amazing all the questions that everybody has asked, all the ideas. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. So I wanna, I wanna make sure we have enough time to thank you because without you, this audience of curious learners, this really supportive community of, of teachers and instructors, um, it's been so amazing to work with you. And I'm gonna let uh, Tanika carry on some more thanks, but just thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been so, so fun. So um, just to kind of go along with what Steve said, one of the questions that I kept seeing was how long had I been with you all? So I only had the pleasure of being with you all for 10 um, episodes plus one, of course, this review. And of course, Jenna was here for the first 20. Um, but regardless, you know, I'm really excited that we got a chance to um, spend any time together for this project. And so we want to uh, do a special thank you to all of the partners um, for this project and all of the beautiful places that we had a chance to visit. Um, our audience and all of you, the curious learners that did a great job of asking questions and waiting pa patiently for our answers because sometimes they didn't come immediately. Of course, we would like to thank um, Durham Public Schools, which I too am a part of. So it's really great to see some, um, some of my old students sometimes and then to meet some new students. And of course, we want to thank all of the classrooms that have visited, especially you all for visiting us uh, with us this week as we did this wonderful review. So just thank you to the classrooms that have joined us and contributed. And I just hope you've learned so much about your community and just thank you so much for joining us every week. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to thank everybody who's who's been a part of kind of making these too. So all of our partner organizations and STEM practitioners, thank you all. It was such an honor to meet you and share your stories and your work with with our with our audience. Um, thank you to David and Carly. We were talking about how they how these were made. Carly did a lot of the legwork in connecting with scientists, and so um, she. I always imagined her as kind of the producer um, role in our in our work. Um, thank you, David, for being an amazing um, camera operator and editor. Um, po post production skills. <laughs> really, really good. Um, and uh, thank you, Tanika, for being an amazing host. Thank you, thank you, Jenna, for being an amazing host. Like I. It was so fun working with both Jenna and Tanika. They're amazing, wonderful humans. I hope you have a chance to have your own relationships with them. They are really, really incredible people. Um, I wanna give you a brief preview of what we're going to be doing next because there is a next, this is a season finale, but it is not the end of Field Trip Fridays. We are likely going to be continuing these actually on Fridays, probably at the same time for DPS summer camp. So we'll be taking a well-earned break for a few weeks, um, but in June, we'll be coming back with uh, more field trips to see amazing places and meet more amazing STEM practitioners in our community. These are your friends, neighbors, teachers, colleagues. These are the people in our community. And I'm so excited to share their stories and their journeys as STEM practitioners with you and inspire your own journeys as STEM practitioners. So I absolutely can't wait to see you there friends thank you so much for joining us for an entire season of field trip fridays it has been just an absolute blessing to do this and be a part of this project with all of you thank you friends see you next time